Hi, welcome to Small Cap Power Discussion. I'm Jim Gordon, and joining us today is Thomas Calandra. He has been around a long time. He's an American journalist, author, stock investor, one of the original uh, founders of Market Watch. He is also the uh, guy behind the Calandra Report. And TomCalandra.com. Tom, it's always a great pleasure to talk to you. Welcome to Small Cap Power. Oh, Jim, thank you. So we, it's always important to to discuss this uh, before we get into uh, the, the the meat of our segment, uh, and that is really that you were there at the beginning uh, with Market Watch, as I mentioned. Uh, give our viewers uh, who may not know that you were there at the beginning a little background on that, because this is back when, uh, as I jokingly like to say, uh, the internet was the information superhighway. What did you and your team see, and what did you feel was missing from, say, regular television back when there was three networks? Talk a bit about how that came together. Jim, these were, you know, th these were the Netscape years, right? Remember Netscape, the browser company? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but um, there was a lot happening at the time. Uh, uh, I was a journalist at Bloomberg uh, in London and also a number of uh, newspapers, magazines, and wire services. And, uh, you know, we decided to somehow marry fresh real-time data with fresh real-time news for ordinary people. What I did was to more or less uh, uh, emulate Bloomberg, right? But only for ordinary people. And, uh, you know, it's been very, very successful. I mean, we sold Market Watch to Dow Jones and uh, they were tumultuous days, 96 roughly through 04. Um, I, uh, you know, I did very well, but also had my head handed to me uh, 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 once. And uh, I'd have to say that What's missing, uh, what was missing then is that what you got on broadcast and the internet was kind of, you know, retread. There's still a lot of retread, but now there are so many fresh sources and there are so many fresh venues. You know, back then it was like Market Watch. Now in, in financial, and not just in financial, Jim, but everything, lifestyles, Hollywood, there's so many places that you can go for information. Some of it real, maybe some of it not. Yeah. And uh, I'd have to say uh, back then it was exciting. It was a melt up, a, a, a term we coined in the financial markets. And But now we're seeing the melt up in everything, not just in financial markets, but, you know, dating, um, uh, uh, data. And you name the area. I'd have to say even, even gardening, marijuana, uh, lifestyle, industry, politics, everything's accelerated. Right. Um, it would be um, an understatement to say that what we've been living through these last five months, uh, all of 2020 so far, has been unprecedented. Um, but buying and selling still uh, continues, investing. Um, you're on the front line, as I keep saying, but can you talk a bit about some of the things that are catching your eye? I mean, we, we want to help the investor out there. Um, there's a couple of companies that you mentioned to me. Let's start with a company called Halifax uh, Lab Company. Oh, well, uh, yeah, you're, you're definitely referring to IMV, the in, immunotherapy lab. And, um, you know, I've had good uh, fortune with life sciences companies back then, Illumina, Core Therapeutics, and, and now. And I'm a very uh, large investor in IMV, so I'm talking my own book. However, it's a, a company in Nova Scotia that's really leading the way in terms of, uh, I hate to overuse the word vaccine because it used to be a bad word, it's becoming a good word again, but vaccine right. cancer, vaccines possibly for COVID, we'll see, and uh, uh, vaccines for infectious diseases. So th that's one thing. And, you know, it's very, uh, I'm not going to say it's speculative anymore because I think it's it's proving itself and it has proven itself uh, with uh, with regulators, the FDA, and so on. But um, I think that there's a chance that we could see uh, one or two companies come out of the laboratory area, the laboratory space, and really become the next uh, uh, I don't know biogens. Right. Uh, or, you know, Genentex, a company here in San Francisco that we know that was bought by Roche Labs. Um, and when that happens, you can see companies go from a $500 million market cap uh, like Illumina back in uh, 03, 04, 05, 
to fifty billion dollars. You know, say a hundred times. Wow. Yeah, as long as you have patience. So patience yeah. is good. Laboratory stocks, and of course, Jim, for your for, for our audience in Canada, especially, but also here in the United States and in the UK, Germany, resource stocks. I mean, there are some terrific, uh, still undiscovered resource stocks, even with this tremendous move in dollar-denominated commodities, especially gold. And uh, so, I like extra gold. They're in uh, Ghana, and uh, they're non-dilutive. And uh, they'll probably have net earnings, but they're not really a producer, they're an explorer. They'll probably have net earnings this quarter or next quarter. Um, you know, I, I like companies in Quebec. I'm, I'm very much a believer in exploration in Quebec because it's, uh, of course, in BC too, not to yeah. slight British Columbia there, home to the beautiful city of Vancouver. But um, I think that Quebec offers some tremendous values, whether it's Azumite Exploration, Monarch Gold, um, Amex Exploration, uh, or Ford Mining. The, too many names for me to uh, pack into my small brain. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about uh, Ivanhoe Mines. Can you mention uh, uh, some words about that, please? Of course. Well, Ivanhoe Mines, that's uh, one of our two largest holdings, uh, you know, both at the Calandra Report uh, for our audience and personally here at home. My family and I, so IMV, the laboratory company, and Ivanhoe Mines. I've been uh, involved or and an investor in Ivanhoe Mines since the since uh, the Ivanhoe Mines Africa was a private company on the plot reef in South Africa with the platinum. Of course, the you know I also was an investor in Ivanhoe Mines, the original in Mongolia, and that was terrific. But I think if you're really looking for a company that's exploration, development, and by 2021, mining, both DRC Congo, copper, and zinc, and the platinum group metals in South Africa. Uh, Ivanhoe Mines is still cheap, even if it's a four or four and a half billion dollar US market cap. Uh, always great to get your uh, insight from the front line, uh, Thomas. Uh, we've been talking with Thomas Calandra. He is the uh, man behind the Calandra Report. And Tom Calandra, and again, just to make sure our, our viewers know, it's T O R T H O N, TomCalandra.com, mm -hmm. Calandra Report. Uh, also, he's an author, a journalist. Uh, we'd like to just quickly mention this. You've written a number of books, but you've got hopefully one coming out next year called Grays in Gothic, which hopefully we'll see next year. Yeah, well, we're, we're, my sister and I uh, co-wrote it, and we're excited. Three-part uh, novel uh, set in Brooklyn, New York, in the 70s. Gravesend was the first community settled in Brooklyn by the Dutch in the 1600s. But it's uh, got a lot in it. It's gothic. Excellent. <laughs> Good man. Okay, uh, Tom, always a pleasure, sir. I hope it doesn't. Uh, I hope another two years don't go by before we get a chance to uh, talk again. Thomas mm -hmm. Glander, stay safe, and thanks for joining us on Small Cap Power. Thank you, Jim. You're quite welcome. I'm Jim Gordon, and thank you for watching.